Given the y dx equals x squared y with y of zero equals one, we're asked to approximate y of one using Euler's method with h equals 0 0.25. First, we would normally use Euler's method when we are not able to solve the differential equation. In this case, the particular solution is y of x equals e to the power of x cubed divided by three. The actual value of y of one is e to the power of one third or approximately 1.3956. We will use this to determine the absolute error as well as a relative error to determine how good our approximation is. To use Euler's method, we assume the differential equation is in the form of dy dx equals f of x comma y. The initial condition is y of x sub zero equals y sub zero. H is the x interval length and x sub n is equal to x sub n minus one plus h and y sub n is equal to y sub n minus one plus h times f of x sub n minus one comma y sub n minus one. To begin, we determine x sub zero and y sub zero from the initial condition because y of zero is equal to one. We know x sub zero is equal to zero and y sub zero is equal to one. Next, we determine x sub one and y sub one. Using our formula for x sub n, notice when n is equal to one, x sub one is equal to x sub zero plus h, giving us x sub one is equal to zero plus zero point two five which equals 0 0.25. Using our formula for y sub n, y sub one is equal to y sub zero plus h times f of x sub zero comma y sub zero. This gives us y sub one is equal to one plus 0 0.25 times f of zero comma one. To determine f of zero comma one, we substitute zero for x and one for y into f of x comma y, which equals x squared plus y, which notice is equal to zero. This gives us y sub one is equal to one plus 0 0.25 times zero, y sub one equals one. And now we determine x sub two and y sub two. x sub two is equal to x sub one plus h, which is 0 0.25 plus 0 0.25 or 0 0.5. y sub two is equal to y sub one plus h times f of x sub one comma y sub one, giving us y sub two is equal to one plus 0 0.25 times f of 0 0.25 comma one. Notice in this case, f of 0 0.25 comma one is equal to the square of 0 0.25 times one. And therefore, y sub two is equal to one plus 0 0.25 times the square of 0 0.25 times one, which is approximately 1.0156. And now we determine x sub three and y sub three. x sub three is equal to x sub two plus h, which is 0 0.5 plus 0 0.25, x sub three equals 0 0.75. y sub three is equal to y sub two times h times f of x sub two comma y sub two, giving us y sub three is equal to 1.0156 plus 0 0.25 times f of 0 0.5 comma 1.0156. And notice the function value is equal to the square of 0 0.5 times 1.0156 giving us y sub three is equal to 1.0156 plus 0 0.25 times the square of 0 0.5 times 1.0156. This gives us y sub three is approximately 1.0791. And now we determine x sub four. x sub four is equal to x sub three plus 0 0.25, giving us x sub four is equal to 0 0.75 plus 0 0.25, which is equal to one. Notice here we have x sub four equals one. This is the last iteration we need to perform using Euler's method to make our approximation for y of one. y sub four is equal to y sub three plus h times f of x sub three comma y sub three, giving us y sub four is equal to 1.0791 plus 0 0.25 times f of 0 0.75 comma 1.0791 which is equal to 1.0791 plus 0 0.25 times the square of 0 0.75 times 1.0791, which is approximately 1.2308. This is our approximation for y of one using Euler's method where h is equal to 0 0.25. Let's compare this to the actual function value on the next slide. Actually, before we do that, let's look at the graph on the right. The blue graph is the particular solution where we can see y of one is equal to e to the power of one third 
or approximately 1.3956, the red graph will be the graph formed using Euler's method. Notice the rightmost point is the point 1 comma 1.2308, which is the point x sub 4 comma y sub 4. And now let's determine the absolute error and the relative error. The absolute error is equal to the absolute value of the difference of the true function value in the approximation, which in our case is 0 0.1148. The relative error is often a better indication as to whether the error is acceptable. The relative error is equal to the absolute error divided by the absolute value of the true value, covering to a percentage, the relative error is approximately 8.23%. If up to a 10% error is acceptable, then the approximation that we found would be acceptable. I hope you found this helpful.